DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Good evening and welcome to Monday night, which has now become the most favorite time of all because this is the night Dan teaches us how to fry a steak. Dan. Fry a steak? Cook no. a steak. No, you gotta grill it. Grill a steak. Boil a yeah. steak. Prepare we don't fry a, stuff. Prepare a steak. I okay. Know. I just had three inches of snow today, so my grill is like buried again. I have three? No, three? I thought that was still short weather for you, Minnesota. <laughs> It was, but not anymore. I'm wimping out. I'm getting old. I'm <laughs> crying and crotchety. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the lady that is in the lower part of the screen, that is Shaney. <laughs> Shaney is Hi, back I'm, with I, us. I'm alive. <laughs> She's happy to be here, too. It's awesome. <laughs> I am. I'm happy to be here. I'm alive. <sighs> I'm alive and well, yes. She's 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 smiling, and it's not... And it, it, yay! It's so nice. Yay. Nice to have have you here. Yes. Okay, nice so to be here. so tonight we've got a few things we're going to jump into and then we'll be we're going to kind of make them we're going to hit a couple of topics in the beginning and then the latter part we're going to be uh, covering some more just kind of general discussion like finding out um, a little bit more about what, uh, what shaney has been up to, what her thoughts were from Vegas because that was something we talked about last week but she couldn't make last week. So, uh, we'll hit that. Uh, a couple of things we wanted to talk about is first, uh, I should actually be third. Uh, what would you like to see was the the title of tonight's show, and we're going to be starting a convention series starting next Monday night at nine o'clock Eastern. It's going to be a seminar put on by people who would be considered experts in those topics within our industry. That's going to happen every Monday night, and we're going to talk about some topics you would like to see. So if you've got something you'd like to see us cover in those. That's something something uh, we will talk about here in just a few minutes. Okay. One of them was CDs. What was the other topic I wanted to hit? Ugh. I can't remember. CD? Was, yeah. Oh, um, are we being too anal about With, uh, our music? Li music li li yes, legal music. Okay. Okay. So we had a couple, a couple of things that uh, popped up, one of which was... Um, that it was reported by someone that the sale of of physical media with our music has now finally exceeded the revenue of the digital. If I read that article correct, did I read that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I thought that was very interesting, a very interesting article because, you know, everyone talks about, oh, well, that vinyl's coming back and it, it is this little piece of the pie, that what they're referring to. But the, the whole business plan of the music industry has changed. And, and I, I watch my kids, how they consume music and how they pay for music. I mean, Shani, what, what are you seeing? You've got, you work with a lot of younger people um, with, with the, um, with, within your DJ company, the entertainers and dancers and such. I mean, how are they getting their music and such when they want to put things on their phone? Well, it's interesting because a lot of them are streaming um, they're not, the article is interesting to me because the people that I'm working with, the younger generation, they're not buying the vinyl, they're not buying the CDs. So that's why that article was so interesting to me. They're definitely streaming. They're definitely, you know, just plugging their phone into their car, listening to music that way and, and just doing the 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 downloading of of the digital so it was very interesting to me to read it because also what i'm understanding is places like target and other stores are doing away with their cds starting next year so that's why i was kind of confused i mean i love that people are are buying physical music because i'm all for that mm -hmm. but it was interesting for me to read it it was like i said i know target and Best Buy starting next year are doing away with physical music and they are doing away with no longer um, selling CDs. Yeah, so I can't it's even very interesting for me to, to, to see, to read that article. I can't even think of the last time I saw a CD, maybe in a kid's section. I was just at Target yesterday and 
even the movies you don't see the movie section as large as it once once was I mean, vinyl for me in the, in the, you know, in my world, you know, there's still places here in Chicago that are staples that people still go and, and buy vinyl. Mm -hmm. So people are, you know, DJs are still going to go to, to those places. I mean, even when, when Jay from, from Pioneer was passing through Chicago, he even was like, okay, these are the places that I want to go to when I'm here in Chicago. And he even names, you know, like, like the spot. So it's like, everybody knows those places here in Chicago that they want to, you know, that, that they want to, you know, go to. So those places are never going to, you know, run out of place, you know, business, but it's very interesting for me about the whole CD world that, you know, I, I love that people are buying them. I just don't know who those people are that are now buying those. See, and the, and the part that, I, I I knew there was going to be some people buying that. In albums, there's enough guys who are now in their 40s and 50s like myself and others who are buying vinyl. So, I mean, we're artificially keeping that up just out of a nostalgia. Yeah. The part that was the, the interesting is that they said that the music industry had record income from last year, something to that effect. And and I just put the article in the um, – I just posted the link in the, the um, chat here. So a lot of – you can grab that if you want to go pop out there. But they are saying it was a record amount. And yet you hear the industry whining about the, how their revenues are way down. It's like, well, the two don't go together. I can see their revenues being down if they're not selling albums, but if they're selling digital and they're making money off the Spotify's and the Apple Music's and such, I, I it doesn't seem, they, they whine an awful right. lot than if they are. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, that's, that's what I didn't understand because of, I mean, I know like my dancers and with the young generation, they are getting their music off their streaming services. Yeah. And, you know, the the Spotify's and the Apple Music and Jay-Z's label and things like that. So that's where they're listening to their music. So that's, you know, if I said CD, CD to them, they'd be like, what? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> AB? Well, and, FG? and the thing that the thing I took from the article real quick, it, I mean, it was almost just I had to go back and double check because I thought it was in there, but it wasn't positive. It was. Um, it's not. It's not that the CD and vinyl increased, but rather the digital dropped farther right. than than the physical dropped. So, so you know, I, I that that could be where the impression is that they're not making money, or probably where you're hearing the whining is from the people who are who are no longer getting their cut of the physical sales because now that it's streaming, it's it's going through different hands. Um, and so the hands that used to get a cut of digital or physical are complaining because their money is down while, you know, the other side of it, it maybe is getting more. Um, but yeah, it, my students, the exact same thing. Like I just the other day we were talking and um, actually I was kind of eavesdropping a little bit, but uh, <laughs> the one was just like, oh yeah, you know, I get six gigs of, of space and then I've got a, you know, then my speed slows down and in my head I'm going, I use one, one and a half, in, you know, in a month, if I'm lucky. And now granted I'm on Wi-Fi almost all the time, which is why that's a little tinted, but like, I'm like, you're using six. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, yeah, of course they're watching everything. They're listening to everything through their phone and they're streaming everything. Nothing's getting downloaded, uh, you know, for that generation. And, yeah. and for them, it's a simple, you know, they've already got the unlimited data. So it doesn't matter um, how much they stream. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, I know for me, my downloads are up. <laughs> so my digital downloads are, are definitely up because, you know, now that I'm doing more and more type of events, I know that my personal <laughs> digital downloads are up because I'm, I'm doing more, you know, like I, for the one track, I'm getting like different versions of it. So I know for, for this year, I, I, I'm definitely up in mine. So I, I added to the statistics, but I guess mine didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably it, it wasn't enough. Right. Like, if you hadn't enough. done it, it may have been twenty six percent drop. <laughs> so only twenty five. <laughs> See, I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I saw, I saw Reggie. Yeah, that there was a mono out there. I haven't checked it out yet. Um, so yeah, it was just it's just an interesting thing because you, again we see the streaming and such and one model that came out of uh, the European market is of course that streaming is basically just an addition to your cell phone bill, figuring that most people are using their cell phone to stream music and it became that way that the their music industry is being is making their profits and such. 
I just, I, I really wonder how that all is going to tie in, tie into that whole music, because that kind of gets into the other side of it is is the whole music, the, the legal music. I, I think I saw about a half a dozen discussions here in the last few days, people talking about, you know, hey, I've got this, this, um, the, these uh, the, this, these songs and such. Do you, anybody want a copy of them? Was one. Another was somebody selling uh, selling some uh, of their mixes, which were basically they redrummed some uh, some uh, regular music and such from the '80s. And it's just like you've got one group of people who are like, "Oh my God, thank you for sharing," and then you have the other group of people who are chastising and saying, "Oh my gosh, you're you're going to hell in a handbasket with that uh, because it's the illegal music." And even MJ and I, when we did our show last Wednesday, and we were talking about music sources, I mean, that was that was some of the things is that a percentage of the the resources that MJ looked at and the, um, the people were throwing out for places to get music, they just they aren't licensed legal music services, and it just gets to the point. That I wonder if it it does it, does it even matter anymore? And if it does, does it only matter to us over you know the us fifty year olds in the crowd who <laughs> are I don't know. For, th there's such a there's such a fine line in, in a lot of different aspects with that because from our performance side, you know, technically what we have is covered. You know, it's covered under the licenses of the place, places that you pay or play mm -hmm. that uh, pay the BMI, the ASCAP, and all that kind of stuff. So from that standpoint, it's not, uh, it, or it shouldn't matter. Um, but how we get it, you still having that, you know crosses that line of, of legality. Um, you know, I struggle with the idea of, of the fact of it being, you know, legal because I, to me, I feel sometimes it's hard enough doing things the right way because of all the, all the things that you're trying to do, your insurance and your, you know, and you're, and you're buying your music and everything else like that, whether you're using pools or whether you're using Amazon to pick stuff up or things like that. But, you know, I, I personally feel like, okay, I'm trying to do this the right way. So now mm -hmm. I got Josh Moe who's come, coming along and cutting corners. So I get upset that somebody wants to do, do it that way. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you, you know, from the, from the standpoint of, are we making a bigger deal than we should? Because, you know, especially those other record pools. Um, but in the same respect, I also have a problem with it because then I'm like, well, all they're doing is posting it and taking my money if I'm subscribing to them. Yeah. Yeah. And as somebody has had asked about, um, if the artists on most of the pools that are out there, even the licensed ones, the artists aren't making making no. money off that. Some of the labels make a, a, a get a little bit, but most of it is the money that goes to is going to the company that is duplicating the discs or putting the infrastructure right. together. And then, of course, the illegal ones aren't. <laughs> they're getting the disc from promo only. They rip it and try to take the watermarks off and they put them up and they. That's the, that's why if you guys go to any of the DJ conferences and there are music artists there, they go up to DJs and they do thank you for playing their music because they know that and they're very nice about it. And they, and they thank the DJs and say, thank you for, for playing my music because they know because of the record pools now that they don't get, they don't get a cut of it and they're like you know I, because of you guys I want to thank you for playing my music you know I know it's not the it's not because of radio and it is because of radio but because of DJs also now is what's making my music hot so thank you yeah yeah and that that's <laughs> and they're hot and so so it's like okay so where are they making any money off it some of them make a little bit of money off YouTube <laughs> and the the ads that are served over YouTube, a few of them are making a few bucks off iTunes and the sales. But even that, I mean, what did Apple announce? They're going to be trying to stop the selling of music on iTunes in two years. Yeah, I think that was what it was. It was, it was in the or was it next year? It was way quicker than I would have thought. <laughs> Whatever it was, it might have been. You might be right. It might have been in um, in uh, two thousand nineteen. But how far is that? How far is that from the time where the artists they and it, maybe when it goes to full subscription services, maybe they will make money off it. Reggie mentioned he doesn't uh, like it when DJs are using YouTube Red. Well, at least with YouTube Red, if I'm a if I'm an artist and I have my song up there, and if I can prove it's my song, if somebody watches it, I get a percentage of their nine ninety five or nine ninety nine a month. I'll get a percentage of that because they watched my content. Even on the Disc Jockey News channel, we can see that. I just was looking at it today in the last month. Um, 
the the uh, walk around for the photo booth expo had 46 cents that came from people who have youtube red and they had watched the video so of those people who watched the video a percentage of their 990 9.99 was paid to the disc jockey news in the form of 46 whole cents but that's how youtube works so to one point the artist might be making money off that youtube red so yeah, I just find it an, it's an interesting thing and and I my kids if if it wouldn't be for the convenience of Spotify and and such to where they've got an app that works really well and they can they can stream the music and they can search for it I don't I don't even know if my kids would pay for music because they would probably try to find a way to get it free somewhere else well I think it's as fast as we we've seen music move lately uh, where you know what's hot uh, among that generation changes you know not even week to week, but sometimes day to day, that to, to stay up on purchases far outspends what they would do just by paying for the subscription streaming services, even factoring in an unlimited cell phone bill. Yeah. Now that's a very good point. So it'll, it'll get to the point where the only thing you'll be paying for from a music service will be music videos. I wonder, I wonder where it will all go, how that'll all go. Interesting. Um, the other the other area that someone brought up um, is is uh, the price of gear. They were saying that they were already starting to see some uh, companies uh, hedging a little bit and and putting out that the cost of importing gear from China is going to go up. Have you guys seen anything on that yet? No. Yeah, that um, it was a lighting company. It was a secondary lighting company. It wasn't one of the main ones, but they uh, sent out a memo, I guess, to maybe their followers, Facebook, what have you. And, and uh, a gentleman had sent it to me, and he had said that they're very concerned because they have they import all their lights from China, which most of the, most of the main companies do, and they were afraid that their cost might jump twenty five percent or whatever. You know, they were using as a number that the cost of their goods could could jump very quickly. And his uh, the recommendation the guy had was to put in your order quickly, so that way you're ahead of any price increase. And actually today, uh, from the Disc Jockey News, we got a, a, um, a letter from our printer. And our printing, the paper that we print on, because it comes from Canada and because there's some things going on between the U.S. and Canada, our, the cost of our, our printing and such is going to go up 10%. On don't the, we get a discount because of Dave? <laughs> yeah, no, no, we don't. Not only do we not get a discount, but because it's got to come across the border, we get an extra charge. So, so it, it's it's an interesting time because a lot of the the cheap gear that we all like to go and look at, and everyone gets excited about, you know, doing a direct thing from AliExpress or even on Amazon or eBay. You can buy a lot of these things direct from the company. I wonder how that's going to going to change, and if that will be. A benefit for the ADJ or Chauvets of the world, or if it's they're going to be affected at the same level, and it's not going to do anyone any good across the board. I do not know. I do not know. Okay, so there's a couple of topics I just wanted to throw out there for those of you who haven't been hadn't been following along and seeing these things, making just keeping you up to speed on that. Um, so so let's go to the next one where with the convention series the convention series is going to be coming up it's a monday night convention with topics and we already have if you go out to djntv.com you click the convention series link at the top you'll see that we have a lot of seminars already scheduled and we're working on getting more of them added and such and what we'd like to do is get some feedback from you guys as far as what would you like to see what kind of topics that we haven't covered on one of our other shows or or something we haven't gone into in depth enough or what have you and and I just wanted to throw that out there. And you guys, while we continue to talk about some other things, uh, throw those up in the chat, and we'll kind of hit them as we go along, and you know, kind of make a list on the side here because I don't want to uh, lose any any good ideas and such. So, but that's that's something that that uh, after, cause I mean, I'm sure both of you had talked to people who didn't make it to Mobile Beat last week. You had you heard people, and one of the big things that I was hearing from people. And, I, and Dan, you've even attested to this: is that you've got you've got a day job. I mean, you'd love to be. Have you ever made Mobile Beat? I haven't. Yeah, and it, and it's just these you know the junior hires like to learn their math. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We got state testing in two weeks. Uh, yeah, it's frowned upon for me to take a week off right now. Yeah, it's it's a difficult difficult thing. Whether it's time commitment or, or as far as the you know having a a the full time job and then you just can't take time off. I mean, somebody had mentioned that they only have like 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 ten days of vacation and they're not going to eat four or five of them up when they have family time. That when the kids are off in some in the summer. So the idea with the convention series is we can bring this to Monday nights, 9 o'clock Eastern. You can sit in front of your computer. You can watch that. You can ask questions after the presentation is done and, and hopefully be able to learn something that will help your business and things. With that being said, the topic ideas. There's things that we haven't thought of and we're hoping that you guys are... And I've, I put up a couple of videos and we've had some really good topic ideas. And one, Chaney, is when I, I brought that to you is... Uh, Somebody had asked about uh, uh, kind of going through the steps involved with a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Definitely. Yeah, I would love to. So that's going to be one of them. We just have to get uh, find out when Shani's schedule is when she's got some time because she's the hardest working woman in showbiz right now. <laughs> going here, going there. Yeah, I know. I would love to do a mitzvah one if anybody wants one about like being interactive on the microphone. I definitely can do one about being interactive on the microphone um if anybody's interested in something like that um for those that don't know i'm i'm not just a a, a dj i actually was a was an mc before before djing an interactive mc which i still am um so i i definitely can can talk about that um you know throw some some ideas out there for us if, if there's anything else um performance wise how to Snapchat and play at the same time. Snap. <laughs> that could be so. Snapchat. <laughs> I will teach so, you how to do that at the same time. <laughs> so if you have, there's this thing called, you know, they, was it laptop face or computer face when they're like doing that? Serato face. Serato face. Thank you. So what is it when you're Snapchat? So, well, I was record box face. <laughs> that was me. I was record box face at Jay's party. I was record box, never been on this equipment face at Jay's party, um, and in in um, in Vegas. That was me. That was that was me at Jay's party. Like I posted, I don't think I smiled once. I don't think I um, had didn't even like have like a grin, a, a smirk, a smile during my set at at all. I mean, everybody of course was like, "Oh, you did great. You know, you're the best set." Blah blah blah. But. I don't think I even like, like even like a smirk to the point that even after my set, somebody came over to me and was like, did you just like bless yourself before your, um, your set? I was like, well, I tried to, but I, I realized I'm Jewish and I don't know how to do it. So I just kind of brushed my shoulders off when it, like in the middle of it, I realized I didn't know if it went left to right or right to left. So I just kind of just went like, went like this. Yeah. So, um, I definitely had, well, I can't say I had Serato face cause we did la no laptops. <laughs> so there was nothing for me to stare at except for like the screen, which I think I ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon <laughs> off the, off the, like off the, the equipment. Cause it was just so much going on in that equipment. I don't even know what buttons I was pushing on there when I was playing the music. I think I literally just ordered a bunch of stuff to my house. I'm not, or if it wasn't my house, I think I ordered it to like China. So, <laughs> but I literally think my face was just like this the whole time. I think I was just stuck <laughs> like that the whole time during the set. Like everybody else was having fun from what I understood. Like everybody was having a blast during my set. <laughs> but I was just like, and Jay even yelled at me afterwards. He was like, I don't know why you were so upset. I don't know why you were so da, da, da. And I'm like, cause I'm playing on equipment I've never seen or touched or even looked at in my life i've never seen these cdjs we're well, not even cdjs they're x x djs like hmm. never even seen them in my whole entire life they were like robots i'm like <laughs> i'm like i've never done this before and and then on top of it you're doing it in front of djs like you're not even doing it in front of like normal people who are drinking you're doing it in front of all djs so right. yeah no stress no oh, no stress so yeah so I definitely had like that face, but it wasn't, but I couldn't, <laughs> I wasn't looking at anything. <laughs> and what night, that was Tuesday? That was Tuesday night. Tuesday night, yeah. Yeah, that was Tuesday night. And that, yeah, Monday night was the, that DJ, well, now it's called the PV Takeover. So Monday night was the PV Takeover. Um, Tuesday was Vanilla Ice and Fat Man Scoop. Um, Wednesday was their um, 
I forgot what they called it. Um, oh, I forgot what it was called. Um, I, they're um, kind of like, I don't want to no. call it like the equivalent to what DJ times does now. Cause they don't want to call it. They don't want to call it that. Cause they don't want to compare it to like DJ times now, like the entertainer of the year, but they're kind of doing something like that now. But I, yeah, I don't remember the uh, Wednesday. I went to the tamale party. <laughs> I was like, I was all about the tamale party, <laughs> but for us, Wednesday night was the tamale party. So, um, and I don't know if you guys heard about any of the parties. I mean, I know like Jer gave you guys a rundown of like all the seminars and things like that. But I don't know if you guys got a run. No, no, we really didn't because I figured you you probably had a better pulse on those than you know old crush. Yeah, well, I mean, as you for you, yeah, as you guys know, I mean, I personally do not go to the DJ takeover due to personal personal things, but um, Flavor Flav still shows up um, (laughs) to to the takeover, and um, because they don't have. a cool MC doing the takeover anymore. Cause you know, I don't know who their MC used to be, hmm. but they don't have anybody else co emceeing it um, with Keith Shockley anymore. Cause I guess nobody can handle Keith Shockley, but me um, or nobody wants to. And maybe it's a wants to it, or puts, yeah. yeah. Nobody really wants to put him in his place, I guess, really. So um, and it ended up being like a 45 minute set, supposedly something like that. Well, guess what? The Havana room has a time limit on yes. it. Yes. Yep. And a 45 minute unscheduled set of, first of all, 45 minute set from Favor Flav. Like, this isn't 1992. I don't, I'm sorry, Boo Boo, but it's not 1992. Like, I get it, DJs. You guys are all excited about Favor Flav. I'm, really, I'm not really that excited about Favor Flav anymore. Like, I'm just not. Like, I'll be honest, like, not even like the first time he came out, I wasn't even that excited <laughs> anymore. Like, I just wasn't like I'm, I'm sorry i'm just not so i don't know why everybody's still that excited whenever he still comes out like really you guys are still excited he comes out and he comes on stage so it ends up being like almost a 45 minute set so when they finally got back to the takeover i mean poor poor nate and, and this happened to nate last year and like you would think they would be like okay nate we're gonna put you towards the beginning of the of the takeover we're not gonna put you at the end anymore Mm-hmm. So this happened to Nate last year. He was like, I think he was the last person la- like last year. He didn't get to perform at all yep. because Flavor Flav came out. So he wasn't last this year. He was towards the end. He went to do his set. He was like, I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute into his set. And they turned the house lights on and yep, he had a cut. Too. And it was like, and ladies and gentlemen, it will fly, you know, we're out of here. So him and whoever was after him didn't get to, didn't get to go on stage. Yeah. So yeah, they definitely need, I mean, I'm, I'm not putting it, you know, the, the PV takeover down or anything like that, but they definitely need to have, I, you know, somebody, they need to have an MC again, you know, somebody on stage with Keith, you know, being a timekeeper like I was and keeping it in place and, and kind of just be like, okay, Hey, I, you know, I know these guys love that, you know, you're on stage and everything, but we got to get back to the reason why people are here. And that's to see what, what we started with the DJ takeover. And that's why Jay kind of under the radar did this event on Tuesday in a, in a, he wanted to kind of bring it back to the way we had the DJ takeover when we started it back in the day, when we started at the Riviera and it was like at the pub and it was just, you know, by DJs for DJs. And it was just kind of like that feeling of just any DJ could come up there and spin. Mm -hmm. And it was just that chill event of just DJ spinning and, and people there talking and having fun and just a chill event. And so, um, Tuesday night was vanilla ice and, and, and fat man scoop. And I found out on Tuesday night that Fat Man Scoop likes to take his shirt off. You didn't know that beforehand? I did not know that. Oh, um, yeah. I've never seen him live. So, I, you know, you know, I've always just heard him on my on my drops. <laughs> and nowhere on my drops does he ever say like, and I take my shirt off. You know, he doesn't say that. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's not the fittest gentleman. 
to take really? it off. Um, <laughs> he looks so. Yeah. So, so he looks like um, a celebrity though. Like Mr. yeah, Man and he definitely likes to jump around and sweat. So I'm just giving you guys, takes his shirt off. He's, so I'm he's definitely hot. giving you guys like a visual of he has a lot of ball of energy though. I'll give you that. Like he definitely has a great ball of energy. So, you know, the pros and the cons were there. <laughs> ball of energy, but likes to take his shirt off and sweat. A sweaty mess. And yeah. um, you know, not the fittest of gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. I and and uh, maybe it's just me, but Dan, can you have you ever played a song from Fat Man Scoop? Yes. Okay. Be faithful. Yeah. yeah. That that's probably. I mean, uh, I mean, he's been on. Uh, you know, I did this stuff when he was with Missy Elliott. Um, you know, on the track uh, "Lose Control." Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously played that, but I mean, just like his straight was be faithful. And that was, I mean, cause that was huge around here. At least it seemed like it just, I had, that was a must play a few years ago. Really? Yeah. So, um, so like I said, but he, I mean, he was great. He energy wise on a scale of one to 10, he's like a hundred. Hmm. Like he definitely has, but like I said, he you know, loved to just take his shirt off and like yeah and spit, he definitely spun it around like a helicopter and jump around yeah um and then you know vanilla ice came out and anyone who saw vanilla ice um a couple years ago it was a very interesting show um he definitely went very rock with his show while he had um a bottle of i don't know if it was jack in his hands um it, it was a bottle of very hard liquor that was in his hand for, for that show. So I was, so it was very interesting for me that they did ask him back. Um, I was next to um, Jer for, for this part of the show. Mm -hmm. So him and I were doing our own commentary. Sure. Um, yeah. During Vanilla Ice. So the two of us together was very interesting. <laughs> so now he had the bottle of, of alcohol last time or this time? Last time. Okay. Last time. So that's why we were very, you know, interested to see what was going to happen this time, you know, for his comeback show. If it was going to be kind of like a very rock show like before or like what was going to happen on this show. Mm -hmm. Um but, um, you know, so he came out and um, at first it was a, it was a little little weird at first because, you know, we there were some things going on that wasn't him at first. And it was some people masks and things like that. So we just, you know, we're trying to figure things out. Then he finally came out and um, did a lot of talking, talked about like, you know, his show on TV and things like that. For those that don't know, he has a show like, yeah, I think he um like rebuilds houses and things like that. Yep. Yeah. So he talked like that. We're like, okay. Um, then, you know, he, you know, reminisced a little bit, you know, on the microphone for, for everybody. We're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. We all know you're from the nineties. Yes. We know this, you know, are we going to go ice ice baby like right away? Or are you just going to like, are we going to, you know, are we going to get to it? Like, do I need to be your backup dancer and just start getting into the dance? Like, you know, what's happening? Like Jared and I were like, okay, like what, like what's happening here, you know, then he um, talked about, you know, uh, Ninja Turtles a lot because, you know, he's like a huge nin nin Ninja Turtle fan because he did the song for, for the Ninja Turtles. For those that don't know, he, he you know, you guys could Google that. He, he did the Ninja, go Ninja, go Ninja, go, mm -hmm. you know, he did the Ninja Turtles song. So um, it took him a while, but then he finally, the last song, of course, was Ice Ice Baby. He brought, he brought like everybody up on stage. So like everybody in the mother could say that they were on stage with, with vanilla ice. So they're up on stage, but, but what got me and what I, what I, you know, put in the chat room was we couldn't take our eyes off his microphone. It was very blinged out um, microphone that was very interesting for me, for him to, to, to be using <laughs> that, that it was very, very blinged out. Um, I find we finally decided that we thought he stole it from Mariah Carey. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, that we think he, <laughs> that he stole Mariah Carey's microphone. So we thought maybe she wanted it back. I don't know, but no, I mean, he did a good job, you know, everybody was into it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, I, we, I took a couple pictures of the crowd because of course, again, like nobody was really living in the moment. Everybody had their phones up. Everybody was, was just Doing filming it. Yeah. I mean, it was just kind of like, okay guys, like, 
a bunch of DJs. Nobody really was just watching the way we were watching. That's why we were noticing every little thing because we were just sitting, we were just standing there yeah, watching different. everything that was happening, watching everything up on stage, watching people's reactions, watching everything. And we just saw everybody's just phones just. And that's the thing. I mean, and that that's the that's how it is nowadays. Is yeah. Everybody's just kind of just videotaping, mm -hmm. so they can watch it la later. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. no, no one does. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So that was yeah. Like I said, so that was Tuesday night, um, and then like I said, then you know we had Jay had the the little silence, you know, under 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 the radar, it's underground uh, pioneer show. party at at Hooters afterwards. Let's, um, let's, and then let's, let's hold on and we'll come back, come to Wednesday and talk tomorrow yeah. here. Uh, for those of you, if you've just joined us, we are uh, in the chat room. We're taking some suggestions and ideas of things you guys would like to see us covering in our convention series, which is going to be starting next Monday night at nine o'clock Eastern on uh, the DJ and TV insider area. You're going to get a link where you can come into a webinar that is being presented by a person who is an expert, basically someone who's done, who, who's covered that topic at one of the national conventions they're going to be doing new topics and such for our convention series so in the chat rooms whether it's facebook or youtube that's where we're kind of bouncing ideas back and forth and such and then on the live video here we're kind of getting a recap uh, from las vegas because shaney was involved in a lot of things that i wasn't involved with this year so it's kind of cool to hear the stories because i was over there and not over here so so i just wanted to give you guys an update if you just joined us in the chat room that's what we're up to so okay shaney back to Wednesday. And then Wednesday was, um, like I said, I forget the name of the party that um, Mobile Beat was sponsoring um, for kind of like, I don't want to compare it to what DJ Times does because they don't want to compare it to yeah, what I... DJ Times does, but it's kind of like, I forgot the name of it. It's kind of like the entertainer of the year. Yeah, I don't. I, where, yeah, I don't remember what it was called exactly. This is new. Like they used to do it a long time ago, and they actually did it for a contest. They, yeah, and they I used forgot, to have the like, All Stars, was what they referred to. Right, it. exactly. And they kind of wanted to bring it back, but they didn't want to do it for like a prize because ah, they didn't want to be crowd pleasers. Crowd Thank you, crowd uh, pleasers. Yes, 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 yes. So there was the crowd pleaser, um, Fat Man Scoop. I think was emceeing um, Cupid. Uh, I'm sorry, Cupid actually, oh, God, he's going to kill me. Sorry, Cupid. Love you. So sorry. Um, that's so my bad. He also um, did a set before Fat Man Scoop and, um, and um, Vanilla Ice. And then Cupid, because <laughs> we were going to go grab food, and then he, on, uh, on Wednesday, and then he was like, oh, I got to run over to go do this crowd pleaser thing. And I'm like, okay, just meet us at the smaller, smaller party. But he ended up, he ended up having to stay at the crowd pleaser thing mm. so i was like sorry we'll meet up afterwards so he you know performed there as well to kind of just show everybody like okay this is how like you know to kind of do like an inter interactive thing so again like that could be another topic for you guys if you want to do you know want to know some something like that so that was kind of cool that you know they kind of want to do something like that the way we do it at dj times so that was wednesday and then while that was going on we had our little undercover DJ cave slash, you know, DJ and TV slash, you know, tamale party going on Wednesday, which was, was awesome. Cause, um, Morrow took, um, a year or two years off. I don't remember one year. Yep. Um, missed, one year uh, off of the tamale party. And we, we brought it back this year with, with a bang. And I was excited because I never really get to really hang out at the tamale party. Cause I'm always, busy working so not only did i get to hang out but i i got to like really participate and help them out with the smelling party this year nice so so that was a lot of fun and virtual dj um was a big part of it and it, it was great and we had the, the sexy um white speaker there that i just was like the new evolve Nobody's looking and everybody just turns their back <laughs> yeah. all at one time could I take this speaker out of the suite if everybody did it at the same time? <laughs> Quick, look over there. Oh. If everybody just looked out the window all at the it's same light enough time. you could. It's light enough you could. What are we looking at? I don't right. know, but you said look over here. So but we the sound look. would suddenly disappear, so that might be the clue number one. <laughs> You don't have to see it. So I'm like, why do they get quiet in here? I mean, I know I could just call Mike, but but it was just a principle of the matter of me like trying to do it. We'd just be the we on Snapchat about it the whole time. 
<laughs> that's also a big thing too at Mobile Beat was that we got to see the unveiling of the white speakers. Yes. So sexy. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely that was a big thing too for people that like are those were sexy. The white speakers. Yeah, so that's kind of like the evenings of um, of Mobile Beat, besides the going out stuff and, and everything. Like that was like I want to say like the on campus stuff of of Mobile Beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The uh, did you get a chance to walk around the exhibit hall space then? I did the small exhibit hall space. Yes. <laughs> exhibit hall space. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. It, it definitely was um, a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be this year. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I know like Bose, you know, Bose did, wasn't there and I know they weren't there because it was, you know, for them, it was, it's always now at the same time as South by Southwest. So for them, they have to kind of make a decision because of musicians. And for them, it was like, okay, well, we, we really have to figure out what the S1 that just came out. It was it was more profitable for them to really just do South by Southwest. So it's like, I got it for them. Mm -hmm. I really understood why they needed to be at South by Southwest. Like it really was a money thing for them. So, I, you know, I get that. But, you know, you know, they had the speaker area, like where Bose was, you know, in, in the back. Um, Pioneer had their speakers there, RCF, um, PB. DAS um, was there. QSC. Electro Voice. Uh, um, well, Electro Voice had their speaker. They didn't have the room in the back. Yeah, they had their Electro side. Voice was like in the main, yeah, in the main like little chat like area like they did last year. So they, they didn't have like their own little speaker room. They they were all like in the front with and, everything. In that main um, central area. Yeah, in the central area. I was just talking like in the back, like they had their okay, own. Got you way in the know, back. Speaker yeah. room, bass boss. Um, trying to think. I think those were all the speakers. If I'm not, I think that's all of them. Did I, Dan? Any speakers you remember from Expo that I? I think that's. Well, there's a couple at Expo that we hadn't seen, like Massey Audio was one from Florida, and they, they didn't, you know, they, no. they, yeah, are, they weren't they're retooling. There. Um, I think it's all of them that were at Mobile Beat that yeah. had their own speaker room there. Yeah, I think you've covered everybody who was okay. there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so those are the speaker rooms like before, and then the main convention hall. Yeah, I want to say it kind of was a little smaller than last year. I mean, John, you walked through it once, right? Yeah, I did. I got over there and, and walked around, and and it 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 had that feeling of being a little bit smaller. But it's it as I I was talking to uh, Ryan and Jake afterwards. It was tough for me to tell because one of the one of the downsides of this whole eye situation is that low light situations. I really struggle with seeing, mm -hmm. and that was okay. incredibly dark. I thought. It was, it was very difficult. I walked right past some people. I had no idea. They walked right by, and they are like, John. And it's like, oh, first off, it was tough to hear. Secondly is that I, they were just as good as in the shadows as far as I was concerned. I was really kind of bummed about that because it's like, oh, I can't even see to really do. If it wouldn't have been for in uh, ProX's booth, and they're firing off that, um, that, that uh, sparkle effect. If it wouldn't have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's doing that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I heard he wasn't supposed to. I mean, I to. loved it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think it's an incredible thing. But he was doing it a lot when I was standing there. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. I heard that he was told he wasn't supposed to run that at all. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if if he cleared it. Yeah. Because you know, like when we do it, you have to clear it mm -hmm. with the hotel. You have to then. They have to clear it with the fire marshal. They have to. You have to go through all the process, even though it's not. FX and it's not like, the whole thing. You still have to clear it with everybody, and you have to clear it. And I don't think he did. I don't know. I would. I didn't ask him, and I didn't want to get into the logistics because I. It's. It wasn't my. I don't want to say it wasn't my event because yeah. I wasn't the one running it. Yeah, precisely. But yeah. So wait, is this the the cold fusion sparkle yes. or, or uh, um, spark glitz? Can't, what yes. is it? Is it yes. glitz or ah? Uh. I've got a video. I did a video on it that's going to be going live. It hasn't already. So is it Pro X that 
Yes, they, the, they have a version yes. of it. They have their own now. Okay, because yes. I, I knew of two other companies, but I didn't know they got into it too. Okay. Yeah, because at that, you had uh, uh, Eternal Lighting has a version mm -hmm. that was there. And then, of course, you've got uh, uh, Pro X, which is interesting because now from that NAM show two years ago when they first showed it, they were wanting to have $2,500 per unit. Now the price has gotten down to, I think, around $1,500, $1,600 a unit. Just how yeah um, he was i mean like i said it's great when they when they shoot off and it's and, and it's a great look and everything but he was shooting it off a lot which again it's a great look but i don't know if he cleared it with anybody yeah but, yeah easier to ask um, forgiveness than permission right not in las vegas <laughs> in right. las vegas you get caught down there that right. could get and there were a couple empty boots there were a couple vendors that did not show up i saw yeah yeah, and that, that happens. That happens yeah. at shows, unfortunately. We saw that at the uh, Photo Booth Expo also. And and part of there are a few of the companies that would have been at Mobile Beat were probably over at Photo Booth already. Yeah. So that, that the one thing I do have to say is Rain did let you, um, which they didn't at Mobile Beat, I mean at Expo. DJ Expo, but at Mobile Beat, you were able to put your hands on um, the the uh, the gear this this time. So you were actually able to touch the 72s and everything and the 12s. So you were able to go up there and um, and go right there and jump on it and mix on it and everything. So that was a cool thing if mm -hmm. you wanted to. And they were so, so nice about it. Pat Fingers was like, come on over here and jump, jump right on it. And he was so sweet about it. So he was like, just come right over here and, and get right on it and touch it and, and, and scratch on it and everything. So you were able to jump on, you know, jump on it and, and play with it this time where it was under glass at, at Expo. Yeah, that was, that was a big thing that uh, I remember MJ was kind of grumbling about that. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. And here you were like, it was just, you know, he was on there mixing the whole time, but the minute you came up, he was like, jump on it, go for it, go, go. So he was, he was just like, come on over, come on over and, 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 and jump on it if you guys want mm -hmm. it. So. So that was a cool thing about it. So I thought that was cool because I know even I was just like, can I just know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, go, you go now. But why did you bring it? I, so you can look at <laughs> yeah. the pretty, that's it. Just to look at the pretty lights. Uh, look at this there. Yeah. Okay, I'm just copying down a few more suggestions here because we're going to wrap things up in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, so that's kind of like, so I know like, you know, Jerry, you know, talked about all the other stuff. So I just kind of wanted to get into the stuff that he didn't talk about yeah. since since I was not yeah and and I'm just gonna jump on my my soapbox just for just for a little a little second I know John doesn't know that I'm doing this but um I know I don't John knew what what was going on with me and he was nice enough to kind of not air my my personal business out to you guys and um I got some private messages from some of you guys and like it was kind of not cool and I want to let you guys know this like First of all, I would never go to a conference if I had the flu. And I would never go up to people and hug them and touch them if I had the freaking flu. Okay, people, I did not have the flu. So for anyone to come over to me and say like, oh, I, I, I shook Shaney's hand and I got sick from her and everything. No, guys, like you did not get sick from me. First of all, like I was in the hospital and everything because of my colon. And I was sick because of my freaking colon. So for anyone to make those stupid comments to me, I am not one of those people to get people sick. And to even come at me afterwards and say you got sick because of me is just think before you say stuff, because you definitely did not get sick because of me. And like I said, I told John what was going on with me. And he was just nice enough just to say that I was out. And he knew everything that was going on with me. So for those of you that have been nice and have been reaching out to me and have been asking me how I'm feeling and everything, thank you. Thank you very much. And I do appreciate those people. And to the idiots that just want to say stupid stuff to me, come on, guys. Think before you say stuff, honestly, because it first of all, you might have just got sick because it's Vegas and you're not uh, sleeping well. Yep. And and for me, I travel all the time and I make sure I drink water and I disinfect stuff and talk to Jim Cerrone about this, you know, Is like that why you took that wet wipe across my forehead when I saw wipe you? things down and stuff like that, because like, you know, and first of all, 
other people have bronchitis. You don't get you don't get you don't get sick from somebody from bronchitis either. It's like those type of things. Like know, know your little diseases. Like Google. Google is your like people say Google is your friend. Know what you can get sick from and you can't get sick from. Okay. Like Dan also probably knows this from his students too. So like know know your infections. <laughs> So I just want people to know, like, those are like, well, I, I shook Shaney's hand. So I'm sure I got like the cooties from her and everything. You didn't, you didn't get uh, colon cooties from me. So I'm so sorry, you guys, if you got sick, it definitely wasn't for me. So those that have been reaching out to me, thank you. Thank you very much. And I definitely do appreciate you guys doing that. So that's my little soapbox for the people that just think, I'm just telling you guys for future, when you talk to other people, I'm not just saying about them being sick, just about other stuff. Think before you say stuff to people, because you it might be a future client you're talking to at an event or something like that. Just be aware of how you say things, because stupidity might not get you. Not so much. Like, yeah, just just that's all I'm gonna say. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, I, Shady, check the chat if you have it, Mike. Mike I don't Waters. even. I don't even want to know why. Why, why is the chat? <laughs> Just, just oh. like water, particular. <laughs> Mike Walter. <laughs> I hugged Shady. He only hugged me for a long time because of my T-shirt. He was excited I was wearing a Prince T-shirt. So he's like, I'm just going to hold on to her because she's wearing that Prince T-shirt. That's why he hugged me for a long time. I think. Lucky he didn't try and like steal it from you. Oh, right? Well, yeah. I well, think it was a guy's T-shirt too. He was probably trying I to debate it. Mike, I don't he think it matters. He hugged me for a long time and he probably feels better because he hugged me for a long time. <laughs> My my computer has a virus now. Must be Shaney. Yeah, see? Arnaldo, no, not there so much. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, we're funny, we're gonna wrap things up. I like up. that comment. That comment. He gets five bonus points for that yeah. comment. <laughs> We're going to wrap things up because we have Joe Bunn and Mike Walter will be back with us in just a few minutes tonight going on with the second show. And then our third show, we've got Thomas Heath and Lucas um, Hendricks and Jared Wade's going to be jumping in on that. He's going to be back from his running errands and such because we are... I messed up our scheduling tonight, so everything's just helter-skelter this evening. So uh, all the links, you can go to uh, find those at my Facebook page. I've put it up at the top with all the new links. So, Dan, Shaney, thank you much for being on tonight, and we will catch you guys later. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insider.